Kumari, and I'm a research scholar in BGTI Mumbai, India. So I'm going to present this paper on integrating IoT and blockchain technology for securing sensor communication. So the introduction and challenges over here. Now, Internet of Things is a collection of sensors, software, and other technologies that are used to gather the data and distribute it online. Industrial IoT is transforming the complicated industrial processes like manufacturing's predictive maintenance, resolving vulnerabilities for unauthorized access in wireless body area networks, and implementing smart access control models. But while integrating these things, there is a risk. Uh, I mean, and the risk is a single point of failure. Uh, it is also unauthorized access, hacking, and some misconfiguration of sensors due to its constrained nature of, that, of the device. Those are the sensors. And also one more risk issue arised over here is data security and integrity. So this is overall threatening the trust in the system, the background. Now blockchain technology combines data exchange, processing and storage technologies across numerous parties. We can leverage this integration of IoT and blockchain in various, in a number of ways, like each data point is timestamped hashed and linked to the previous one. So the potential over here of convergence of IoT and blockchain is fortifying security, enhancing the privacy and streamlining the operations. The decentralized nature of blockchain stops the data tampering once the data is pushed to the distributed ledger. The foundations, the basic foundations of this study is basically blockchain technology. Blockchain is a type of distributed ledger technology that enables the safe, transparent, and unalterable storage of data over many networks. The hash lock that connects each block in a blockchain to the one before it, uh, let's take an example of SHA-256, it's a hash function, so it makes it nearly difficult to change the data after it has been recorded. So, however, it is challenging for uh, hackers or somebody else to infiltrate the system since the data is kept over a network of computers instead of a single server. And uh, by using blockchain, the transparency is achieved. So transparency makes sure that every action is available for everyone to see and verify, which promotes cooperation and confidence. So data integrity is also guaranteed here. The second one is smart contract. A smart contract is a computer program that consists of self-executable code, basically. So these are created from uh, the accepted contract clauses and are kept on the blockchain. Smart contracts ensure the proper access control and contract enforcement. So basically over here, the, there is a negotiation between a number of concerned parties. The rights, obligations, and limitations of the contracts are first discussed and negotiated. Okay. Then uh, it's basically by using any kind of programming language or programming language, uh, uh, this or logic, the programmers convert this uh, negotiated uh, data into a code. So an agreement may be reached after several rounds of deliberations and negotiations. So this is the overall life cycle of smart contract. There are four steps here, creation, deployment, execution, and completion. In the creation process, uh, the negotiation is, uh, we are, is taking place over here between the two parties. In deployment, we are basically freezing the assets Third step is execution, which in which we follow the evaluation. And finally, we have completion state. So here we are updating the states and we are unfreezing the assets. So once this process is performed, all the data is written or the smart contract, it's written to a blockchain and the data processes block by block as shown in this figure. There are some advantages of using blockchain and smart contracts, decentralization, update secure dives, improve privacy, improve data administration, improve scaling, agreed upon contracts, which tr triggers meeting certain well-defined preconditions, verifiable self-executable chain codes, and changed state written on blockchain after trigger and execution. 
the investigation which we are performing over here is IoT and blockchain integration. So the, uh, there are certain fundamental needs uh, the, which are required for this industrial IoT and IoT systems. And by integrating this, these fundamental needs are met. Some of the needs include massive storage, business or industry automation, fault tolerance, and data integrity. Now, blockchain can provide seamless authentication, data privacy, security, resilience to attacks, ease of implementation and self-maintenance. So these two technologies uh, which could be integrated together and they are also, they could spur the technological advancement and innovations. So basically over here, it is possible to create edge devices to store the blockchain data and carry out transaction validation, which including routers, so routing switches, integrated access devices, multiplexes and gateways. And to perform the services for issuing a transaction uh, to a blockchain network on behalf of some associated resource constraint device, uh, for example, sensors, we can also make use of intermediate devices like relay routers. So this can be developed. This figure depicts the IoT and blockchain integration. So as you can see here, there are several nodes over here, which is uh, representing the block configuration. We are also having uh, several actors over here. Those are the IoT gateways, authenticated admin, and authenticated users. As you can see, uh, this IoT smart contracts are actually shared between this authenticated users, IoT gateways, authenticated admins, and IoT gateways. This is the next figure which shows the future of IoT and blockchain integration. So right now, presently, as you can see here, there are uh, many applications of IoT, including variables, retail, logistics, manufacturing, utilities, agriculture, appliances, healthcare, and vehicles. So in the, uh, there are two scenarios which is depicted in this figure. On the left-hand side, you can see the present. Over here, all this device, all these things, all are connected through a cloud. So they, they require a cloud to store the data and access the data from the cloud. But when, when we talk, look into the right-hand side of this figure over here, you, you can see the future over here. So this, by using, by integrating IoT and blockchain, all the uh, Internet of Things of devices we are talking about, the sensors or the devices, these devices can communicate with each other without any requirement of a cloud. This next figure is depicting the, the uh, blockchain IoT applications. There are some of the applications over here, like uh, transportation, energy, government, democracy, and law enforcement, telecommunication, information systems, defense and public safety, farming, uh, financial transactions, and smart cities al along with healthcare. And there are a lot of applications which goes in the business uh, blockchain IoT application. So the first framework which we have investigated over here is that is basically the IoT and blockchain framework First one is IoT to IoT. So it calls for the use of a shared register for the IoT data over here. So this, this is the simplest method of integrating blockchain into the IoT network. Now, uh, yeah, this uh, next figure shows the demonstration of IoT to IoT framework. There are three types of layers here, application service layer, the repository layer, and a physical layer. So basically, over here, these three layers are used to make up the suggested system. And there are four steps which are performed over here. On the topmost layer, you can see the application service layer, which includes the client. The second layer is the repository layer. Over here, you can see this. There is IoT marketplace, okay? And there is the IoT platform. So a registration is happening over there. And acknowledgement of that registration is also taking place in the repository uh, phase. So step number one is verification and authorization. Step number two is uh, basically registration. Step three is device discovery. And step four is device access and control. The second framework over here is IoT to blockchain. So in this method, the IoT devices communicate with each other 
IoT devices communicate with each other with the help of a blockchain, which functions as a cloud for conventional IoT devices. And this, over here, the blockchain can be built on IOTA, modem.io, or Riddle. So the IoT blockchain platform is conceptualized in this figure over here. As you can see here, this figure depicts the IoT blockchain uh, integration. So it has a vast array of IoT devices, data storages, user devices, servers, and local bridges, which are connected by a peer-to-peer -peer blockchain network over here. The third strategy is hybrid strategy. So the IoT devices share the majority of the data interaction with the blockchain over here. This strategy introduces POC computing to overcome the limitations of blockchain and IoT devices. The complete architecture over here includes two levels, blockchain and age-based authentication layer. And the central idea over here is to deploy a centralized authentication level to Internet of Things devices that, that basically interface with network edges to process and store data. So this is the hybrid blockchain-based architecture. Uh, this uh, this table is basically the comparison of IoT and blockchain frameworks, basically. So over here, uh, we have compared the three types of architectures. Those are IoT to IoT, IoT to blockchain, and hybrid strategy. So uh, first one is IoT to IoT. So here, data exchange takes place between the devices, between the IoT devices, and uh, Whereas in IoT to blockchain, blockchain is used for interaction and communications. In hybrid strategy, we use we make use of edge computing. So edge computing is employed to establish a seamless environment for interaction. Then uh, IoT to IoT needs complex routing and discovery procedures. IoT to blockchain, over here the information is recorded on a blockchain. In hybrid strategy, we can make use of artificial intelligence, POC computing, and edge computing. POC computing, basically, uh, it can be used. Several nodes can be considered as POC nodes over here. Next, in IoT to IoT, it, we, it operates best when devices are on the same network or under a single domain. IoT to blockchain, it is beneficial for IoT devices from different domains. And in hybrid strategy, we are incorporating for computing. So IoT to IoT is beneficial when low latency and great performance is required. IoT to blockchain is, yes, it is used where high fidelity of the data is required. And hybrid strategy basically, it, it incorporates, as I said, that it incorporates different technologies, which includes AI and uh, for computing, edge computing. So here for computing and all, uh, the, we can incorporate other uh, also. So it reduces the energy consumption and some of the bandwidth and latency problems. Now, some more advantages of blockchain and IoT framework. So the, uh, the solution of to IoT privacy and dependability issues lies in blockchain technology. There can be single point of failures, and this single point of failures can be eliminated by using blockchain technology, uh, since uh, it has a decentralized strategy which strengthens the device's ecosystem. Uh, blockchain's encryption algorithm will increase the confidentiality of, uh, of the customer data and the many, there are many key benefits, which includes greater security, uh, high level of confidentiality, improved traceability, cheap costs, and the absence of the party intermediaries. Now the blockchain and IoT integration, we have also invest, investigating on our blockchain and IoT integration in supply chain management. By eliminating the dependency on third parties, Integrating blockchain into the IoT framework enables the creation of a secure, decentralized architecture, supporting the development of new business models. And the integration also offers, uh, uh, it increases uh, to optimize supply chain processes by improving the traceability and operational costs and enhancing the overall supply chain security.
So basically, this IoT system's dependability and scalability can be improved by using or incorporating blockchain technology and by especially making use of smart contracts. Uh, smart contracts are basically used to build trust for data and executed activities. So to increase, uh, we are also, it, it's also helpful in increasing the access control security in IoT devices. Since I've discussed that IoT are constrained devices and they are not that much secure. So to, in order to increase access control security in IoT, a methodology that uses zero knowledge proof and smart contract with blockchain, within the blockchain are used basically. And deploying this access control attribute data in a blockchain, we can. Uh, it's also helpful to increase the access control tokens. This is the figure which shows the blockchain and IoT scopes. As you can see here, there are uh, different scopes. Uh, like I've already discussed about the applications. There are many scope over here, which ranges from infrastructure to uh, you can all uh, infrastructure bandwidth, and all latency, mining, the mining equipments. So mining equipments, which basically include CPU based, GPU based, FPGA based, and mining boycotts, hash functions. This is overall scenario, overall IoT and blockchain scope. Now the conclusion over here. So IoT networks can benefit from blockchain technologies, increased security and efficiency. So here we are talking about uh, what are the advantages of, uh, which are used, what are the various advantages by incorporating blockchain technology into IoT. So uh, this is uh, increased security and efficiency is one of the advantage. Uh, because uh, by the decentralized nature of blockchain and the usage of smart contracts, the adoption of this technology comes with uh, several issues as well, which includes limited resources, inadequate encryption, scalability issues, and communication protocol. There are certain ethics of actors at various touch points of supply chain, and those are important. For example, uh, wherever their human inputs or endorsement is necessary. The, so lots of work is required uh, in terms of new regulations and formal, formulation of new standards over here. So this can improve the integrity of human actors. This can resolve the blockchain interoperability issues also, and it can also help to mitigate the attacks, for example, uh, civil attacks, and expedite the adoption. Hello. Uh, thank you.